Welcome to Hartman Math. Today we're going to get away from conic section. We're going to talk about parametric equations. Before we do that, a little bit of a review on our warm up from the conic sections. Go ahead and pause the video here. Resume when you're done. All right, number one, we've got a hyperbola. Y comes first and is the positive one, so it's going to be vertical, opening up and down. Uh, the center is going to be 0, comma 1, and then A is going to be 3, and B for a box point is going to be 1. So as far as finding uh, foci, asymptotes, and graph, foci C squared equals A squared plus B squared, so C is going to be the square root of 10. Since the center is 0, comma 1, we're going to go up and down root 10. That's from the y coordinate, so 0, comma 1 plus or minus the root 10. Asymptotes, we could get them from the graph, or we could do them now. Remember that we're going to go uh, point slope form uh, y minus the 1 is equal to plus or minus. And the slope is going to be the rise over run. Rise comes from under y, so 3 over 1 is our slope times x minus the 0. So we'll just write that as x. Um, WebAssign might want you to then add the 1 and make that plus or minus 3x plus 1. That is slope intercept form. Uh, but here we're good. And then as far as graphing, we know the center is 0, comma 1. We're going to go up 3 and down 3 for vertices, left 1, right 1 for box points, draw the box, draw the x, and since the vertices are here and here, that's where the branches are going to go. We are not required to plot the foci. All right, number 2, the square root of Lincoln minus Jackson. Lincoln was the 16th president, Jackson was the 7th. So 16 minus 7 is 9. The square root of 9 is 3. So we're talking about presidents. The third president is Jefferson. Jefferson's the answer. All right, today's lesson is 10.6 parametric equations. We're talking about plane curves. Usually, we have a single equation, two variables such as x and y, where y equals negative x squared over 72 plus x, something like that. We say, hey, that's a parabola, and so on. What we can do is, for all these points that are on that curve, we can define the x-coordinate and the y-coordinate in separate equations. So the x-coordinate is some function of t, and y-coordinate is some function of t, where t is this other variable, that is going to be known as the parameter. So definition, uh, we've got f and g as continuous functions on an interval i. Then the x-coordinate is defined as a function of t, y-coordinate as defined as a function of t. These are parametric equations, so it's one set of parametric equations. We'll emphasize that later. T, that third variable that they're both going to be defined in terms of, in this case, we call that the parameter. Sketching a plane curve, example number one. So we've got a set of parametric equations. X is defined as, Y as defined as, and here's I, our interval. We're saying that T has to be between negative 2 and 2. So we could set up a table of values to explore this and see what's going on. And since t has to be between negative 2 and 2, 5 points seems to be good choices here, so we'll just uh, choose those. So now x is defined in terms of t, so if we plug in negative 2 for t here, square that, take a half minus 1, we're going to get x is 1. If we do the same thing for y, y is 2 times the t, so we have a point at 1 comma, negative 4. Now let's do it again, plug in a negative 1, you get negative a half, plug it into y, you get negative 2, so there's a point here. Plug in 0, 
negative 1 and 0. So negative 1 comma 0 is a point. 1 for t. Get another negative a half comma 2. And plug in the 1. So we get 4. There's the point. So on this interval, it gives us an idea of what's going on. And we can sketch the rest of the curve. But we also want to sketch the direction that the curve is heading. So we started here and we went this way. So we're going to show that with arrows along the way. Arrows to show the direction that the curve is heading. Right. Let's go ahead and do uh, this one. Using a graphing calculator, a graphing utility, pay attention to the interval, and so on. So we're going to do this with a graphing calculator. We're going to press the mode button. And normally our calculator is in function mode, such that when we press the y equals button, it's going to come up as y1 equals, y2 equals, we could put in a line, we could put in absolute value, and it's going to graph it from there. We want to choose PAR for parametric. Now press Y equals. So now you can see it looks a little different. It says X1 as a function of T equals Y1 as a function of T equals. So we can type in our functions. Remember, x was supposed to be t squared plus 1. So if we go down to our variable button, see how it says x t theta n? Well, since we're now in parametric mode, if I press our standard variable button, it's going to come out as t. So I want to do t squared plus 1. Arrow down. And now our y1, and put in the y function, which was 2 times t divided by 3. And now I want to press window so that I can go in and adjust that interval that was in the problem. So here it's going to give us the interval that we're looking for t min and the t max. So we were from negative 1 to positive 4. And then right now, this is our normal window, the x min, the x max. I don't know what it's going to come out to be, so let's reset it to negative 10 to 10 and so on. and press graph. So we can see what's going on here. If we really paying attention, we saw that it started here and then it took this path. So I don't know if it stops there. So I really need to look a little bit further that way. I clearly don't need all this space and this is kind of wasted here. So we can kind of narrow this down, take another look at our window. Definitely don't need all of this. So window, we go down to x man. I definitely don't need all that space to the left, so I'm going to change this to negative 2. And the max, maybe 20. And since we're going so big, maybe I just changed my scale so all the marks are by 2s. And then I don't need all of this, so maybe negative 5 to 5. And again, graph. So now we can see it did end right there, which is at the end of our where the t is. Now if I did things like trace, you can trace along the curve and see what's going on. But that's the how we can use the graphing calculator to do parametric equations. All right. So if we want to eliminate the parameter and basically take it from a set of parametric equations put it back into regular form, which we call rectangular. Here are our steps. So we have our parametric equations. Take one of them and solve for t. 
it seems like this one would be the easiest one. So we multiplied both sides by two, we solve for t. Plug that, replace that, do substitution into the other equation. Since we use this one, we're gonna substitute into the top one. Simplify, and there we have a rectangular equation. We can put it in whatever form we need to. Uh, this is x equals 4y squared minus 4, but that's now in terms of x's and y's. All right, example number two, let's sketch the curve represented by the equations by eliminating the parameter, adjusting the domain of the resulting rectangular equation. All right, so we want to solve one of these for t. I think we may want to go with this one. So if we, there's a couple ways we do it. If we squared everything, so x squared equals 1 over t, and then took the reciprocal on both sides, we would get t equals 1 over x squared. So that's step one. We solve for t. Now we're going to substitute into the other equation, replace our t with 1 over x squared. Let's go ahead and square that and simplify. So we've got the function. Now in terms of, we kind of know that this is a uh, rational function where it would be very similar to two over or one over x squared, which as a base graph looks like that. It's gonna be stretched vertically by a factor of two and then our asymptote uh, is going to shift down uh, by one. Okay. So uh, from here, we know, based on the x here, that since we're taking the square root of t, t has to be uh, greater than or equal to zero. But because it's part of the denominator, and you can't divide by zero, it can't be equal to zero, so it has to be strictly greater than zero. And that means if t is greater than zero, one divided by any number that's greater than zero, it's gonna to have to be positive. X has to be positive. So this is only true for positive values of X's. So instead of having everything, we just have the right side of the graph. So minus one, there's our asymptote. Asymptote when X equals zero, because you can't divide by zero. Since x is greater than 0, we only want this part, and that's it. And if we were plugging in uh, values of x, we would see that it does travel in this direction. Example number three, eliminating angle parameters. We've got x equals cosine theta, y equals 2 sine theta, and here is our interval. 0 is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to 2 pi. So in order to eliminate the angle parameters, we kind of got to see, is there a relationship between cosine theta and sine theta that doesn't involve another function? And there is our very important Pythagorean identity that sine squared theta plus cosine squared, squared theta is equal to one. So we'll get to there. But before there, step number one is always we're going to solve. This time, instead of solving for theta, we're going to solve for one of the functions, cosine theta or sine theta. And we're going to solve for both of them. So this one, uh, we're going to divide both sides by two. So now to relate cosine theta and sine theta, we're going to use the idea. And the order here doesn't really matter. So if cosine theta is x, cosine squared theta is x squared, and if we square both sides here, we're going to get y squared over 4. That's equal to 1, and then we should be able to recognize that as a rectangular equation. What is it? It's an ellipse. So it's an ellipse, 
And we could graph that in rectangular form. Left and right one, up and down two. Now, as far as the arrow, which way are we going here? Well, I would say let's go back to uh, this and say, all right, so if we started at zero, what is the cosine of zero? One. What is the sine of zero? Zero. So we're starting at one, comma zero. This would be our start in our interval. Now let's travel here. Let's go to pi over two. So cosine of pi over two is zero. Sine of uh, pi over two is one. One times two is two. So we would be now be here. So we went from there to there. So it tells us we are going in this direction. So we could. put in to show which direction our curve is moving. And lastly, what about going in reverse, starting with a rectangular equation and finding parametric equations? It's always got to be a set. We need an x equals and a y equals uh, to come up with that. There are uh, many, many, many infinite number of sets of parametric equations that would work. But let's see if we can come up with the most logical. Uh, easiest probably usually, since y is usually a function of x, is to start with the independent variable x and define x in terms of t. And the easiest way to go, x equals t. So if we say x is t, and then replaced the x with t, we would get y equals 1 over 1 plus t squared. So there is a set. It's probably the most logical set. It's not real uh, interesting, but pretty basic, but it definitely works. If we needed to come up with another set, okay, we could go something as simple as x equals 2t and go for there. Or take advantage of what's going on here and say, what would be something really easy to square? What if we said that x was the square root of t? Then y would be, square root of t squared is t, so y would be 1 over 1 plus t. Or if we could go x equals t squared, and then we would get y is equal to 1 over 1 plus t squared squared t to the fourth. So there's lots of different uh, sets that we can come up with. That's it for today. I'll see you next time.